Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos. Today I'm in the beautiful city of London here in England and I'm visiting the world famous National Portrait Gallery which is adjacent to the National Gallery here at Trafalgar Square in the center of London. So let's go for a walk and I want to show you what I really like, the paintings and portraits that I like in this world famous fascinating gallery. Let's do it. And uh, this is a portrait of King Henry VIII, painted by a Dutch artist in 1520. And uh, here's Queen Elizabeth I, painted in 1575 by an unknown artist. This gallery that you see here opened its doors originally in 1856. It has been located in, in this building since 1896. And as I said, this building is located right next to the National Gallery here in the center of London. Now the purpose of the National Portrait Gallery is to display portraits and paintings of the greatest and most famous British and English figures. So in this particular documentary, we're going to concentrate on the scientists and historical figures, figures that have shaped the history of Britain, England, and the world in general. And uh, here's another painting of Queen Elizabeth I, painted in 1600 by an unknown artist as well. And uh, here's the uh, famous painting of Sir Francis Drake, completed in 1582. One of England's most famous sailors, sea captains, and pirates. And uh, here's the most famous painting of the National Portrait Gallery here in London. This is a painting of William Shakespeare, painted by John Taylor around 1600. And if you are lucky enough to visit this wonderful gallery, you're going to find this painting on the first floor. And here's the image of William Shakespeare the famous playwright right there. Now, if you visit the National Gallery next door, of course, what is important when you view a painting is who painted that particular piece of work, let's say Van Gogh. In the National Portrait Gallery here in London, who painted it is not that important. What is important is who is represented on the painting. And uh, here's one of my favorite architects in the world. This is Sir Christopher Wren, W-R-E-N. This painting was completed in 1711, oil on canvas. Sir Christopher Wren is famous for designing St. Paul's Cathedral, Chelsea Hospital, and the Greenwich hospital as well. And uh, here's the portrait of Sir Isaac Newton, completed in 1702 by Sir Godfrey Neller. This is oil on canvas and of course Sir Isaac Newton was and he still is the greatest mathematician and scientist of all times. And uh, here's a portrait of George Washington, the first American president. This portrait was completed in 1797 by Gilbert Stuart. You can spend hours and hours in this gallery walking around 
and admiring the portraits and the paintings of the historic English and British figures. Now, if you come here, make sure you get a map because this building is rather complicated and you shouldn't miss any of the rooms and any of the displays. And uh, here's the most famous painting of Queen Elizabeth I here at the gallery. This is known as the Ditchley portrait. It is oil on canvas and it was completed in 1592. And uh, of course, a national portrait gallery here in England would not be complete without a painting or a portrait of Queen Victoria. This one that you see here was completed in 1863 by George Hayter, H-A-Y-T-E-R. And here is a bust of Queen Victoria completed in 1845. And uh, here's a portrait of Prince Albert completed in 1867. Of course, Prince Albert was the husband of Queen Victoria. And uh, here's a portrait of King George III, completed in 1761 by Alan Ramsay. King George III, of course, was the English king during the American Revolution of 1776. And uh, here's the portrait of the famous astronomer Edmund Haley. This portrait was completed in 1720 by Isaac Wood. Haley, of course, was, and he still is, one of the most famous astronomers ever. And he is the person after whom Haley's comet is named after. Over two million people visit this famous gallery every year here in the center of London. And uh, here's a portrait of the greatest English poet ever. This is John Milton. This painting was completed in 1629 by an unknown artist. Of course, Milton is known for his epics, including Paradise Lost in 1667. And uh, here's a painting by Robert Walker, completed in 1649, and it shows Oliver Cromwell, one of the most historic English figures a military leader and a politician. And uh, here's something special for my Greek viewers and friends around the world. Here's the portrait of George Gordon Byron or Lord Byron as he is known, a romantic poet from the early 19th century. English poet. He left England in 1816 and joined the Greeks on their struggle and their fight against the Ottoman Empire. He actually died in Greece in 1824 in the town of Mesolunki. This portrait was executed in early 1830 by Thomas Philip. And you can see the outfit that he's wearing it is the outfit of a Greek fighter from the 1820s. And uh, here's a portrait of John Dalton, D-A-L-T-O-N, an English scientist and the father of the atomic theory. He described that all matter is composed of atoms. This portrait was completed by Thomas Phillips in 1835. Now we have to look very hard to find 
is portrait of one of the greatest English and British heroes of Admiral Horatio Nelson. You can see up here the hero of the Battle of the Nile and of Trafalgar, the Battle of Trafalgar, where he died in 1805. This portrait was completed in 1797 by Francis Abbott. And uh, here's a portrait of Charles Dickens, one of the greatest English novelists. This uh, portrait was completed in 1839 by Daniel MacLeese. And uh, here's a portrait of John Stuart Mill, one of the most influential English political thinkers and philosophers of the 19th century. This uh, portrait was completed in 1873 by George Frederick Watts, W-A-T-T-S. And uh, here's a portrait of Bernard Montgomery, the British general that defeated the German forces of Rommel in North Africa at El Alamein. This portrait was completed by Frank Salisbury in 1945. He is shown here pointing at the beaches of Normandy for D-Day, which of course was on June 6th of 1944. And uh, of course, Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill needs no introduction. He was the British Prime Minister during the Second World War. And this is a 1954 portrait by Vivian Sutherland. It is a very small portrait, as you can see. And I had kept the best for last. Right in front of me is the most popular portrait here at the National Portrait Gallery. Let's go take a look for just a few seconds. Come on. This is the famous portrait of the Duchess of Cambridge. The wife of Prince William, and this was completed in 2012 by Paul Emsley. And if you visit this fascinating museum here in London, you shouldn't miss this one. Wow, I hope you have enjoyed a tour of the National Portrait Gallery here in London. I tried to show you a cross-section of the portraits and the paintings of famous British and English politicians, historic figures, and also scientific figures as well. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. This is Vic. Bye-bye.